paperwork for you. Um, the dogs in question, which is Lola and Zeus, they're American Bulldogs. They're still here in our care and custody at this point. Um, I'm going to send up the police report, the pet ER, in reference to the complainant's dog that was severely injured. Um, also, there are some photographs um, in reference to the injuries to the people. So on September 26, 2019, at 07.30 hours, Animal Care Control Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson arrived at 3651 Duckhorn Way in response to a police assist call for a severe animal bite. Upon their arrival, they met with Police Corporal Fike with Western District Police who informed them that there was indeed a severe bite to victim Mr. Gunte Kim, whom already left the scene for medical treatment. Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson then went to the owner of the dogs that were involved at 3651 Duckhorn Way, a Jasmine Parker Johnson, who gave them a statement of what occurred. In Ms. Parker's Johnson statement, she claimed that both of her dogs, Lola, a white black altered female, American Bulldog type, and Zeus, an altered male, brown and white, American Bulldog type, were on leashes. Lola then started pulling on the leash when seeing the victim's dog on a leash coming towards them. Ms. Johnson stated that she told her daughter to go back to the to the house and get the shot collar for Lola. During that time, the victim dog owner was closer, and Ms. Johnson yelled for Mr. Kim to pick up his dog. At that time, the two attacking dogs in question were able to go after Mr. Kim, biting him on his face. At that time, based on the severity of the wounds to Mr. Kim and the circumstances of the attack, Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson determined that the best course of action was to complete a public safety impoundment of both Lola and Zeus because it was unclear which dog inflicted the bite to Mr. Kim. Ms. Johnson was cooperative and signed the public safety impoundment forms without incident. Ms. Johnson gave the statement and advised that she was walking the dogs, Lola and Zeus. By the time she got to the second fire hydrant, Lola seemed irritated. So she sent her daughter to go and get the shock collars. By that time, she had the collar on Zeus the man was closer and Lola started to pull her as she was pulling. She started yelling at the man to pick up his dog. Jasmine advised that they, she had hold of Lola and the man had Zeus and she kept yelling for someone to get the little dog. Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson also obtained statements from the other attack victim with minor scratches and bites, a Miss Mia, is it Kyung Kim? Yeah, Mia Kyung Kim. That's Mr. Kim's mom. She is his mother, a Miss Kim. Miss Kim stated it was morning time at approximately 6.30 a.m. Outside was a lot of noise. She went out to see, and a dog, Lexi, a chow mix, was surrounded by two white dogs. Two neighbors came to see. She witnessed the, the attack to her son. One of the dogs bit her son, and those dogs were loose. I, Officer Thomas, did speak with Miss Kim, and she advised that her dog was injured and is 17 years of age and needed vet care. Ms. Cam gave a statement regarding the incident and photos were taken of her wound and her dog Lexi, a black lab collie mix, 17 year old female, whom was attacked also. Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson examined Mrs. Kim's dog Lexi and the suspect's dog and did not see any visible injuries. Officer Lachoni and Officer Simpson spoke to the neighbor, a Mr. Rex Murray of 3555 Tribeca Trail whom had witnessed the incident. Mr. Murray stated that Lola and Zeus were off leash when the incident occurred. He advised that his wife called him downstairs advising that someone was getting attacked by dogs. He advised that he ran outside and grabbed a stick out of his garage to put between the dog's mouth to free the dog from the other dog. Mr. Murray explained that the dogs had shock collars on, not leashes. The owner of the suspect dogs is a Christina Branch, Jasmine Parker Jackson is her daughter, that was walking the dogs at the time of the incident. On October 3, 2019, I, Officer Thomas, spoke to the victim, Gun Tai Kim, and asked him about the incident. He advised that he couldn't write in a statement at the time due to his injuries he seen to his hand. He may thought that he, his fingers were broken and he had to go back for medical care. He advised that on September 26 of this year, at about 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., he was walking his dog on a leash near his home on Duckhorn Way. He explained that as he approached, in which he believed was the owner, Miss Branch, walking her two pit bull type dogs, he advised that she lost control of the dogs and the dogs attacked him and his dog. He advised that he received treatment. He had 12 sutures to his head near his ear. He advised that his dog Lexi was taken to Pet ER in Columbia, Maryland for treatment and had drains and sutures to close her wounds. 
He advised that he was bitten when the dogs were attacking his dog and jumped and bit him in the face. Both dogs were under quarantine. During the investigation and speaking with Miss Brandt, she advised that Jasmine is her daughter and she had the dogs on leashes at the time of the incident when they got away from her and when the incident occurred. I explained to Mrs. Branch that orders would be placed to correct any incidences from reoccurring. We also discussed that her property is a rental property. After full review of the case file, Animal Care and Control did place dangerous orders on Lola and Zeus and means to protect the public under Article 124403 of the Anne County Code. The order was served to Mrs. Branch and she did file an appeal. Her dogs are still here today. And this is my main victim. His mom could not be here today because of her work schedule. I do have one question. You made reference a couple times to the fact that somebody said pick up the little dogs, assuming you were talking about your dog. Um, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember. Because according to the the ER report, that dog weighs about 80 pounds, which is the weight yeah. of the other two. It's dogs. not a little. Yeah, she's, she's not, not a little dog. Okay. She's not a little I just dog. Yeah. That. yeah, that was basically was given was given to me in the statements okay. that were taken on the scene. Just want to make sure we're talking about the same dog. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same dog. Anything else? Um, I'm sorry, so there's just no other statements from Mr. Kim uh, at this point, correct? Um, yeah. um, I'll go ahead and uh, let Ms. Branch uh, testify. If you could go ahead. Um, Ms. Branch, if you could just uh, tell them about uh, yourself and uh, your dogs. Okay. Um, of course, I'm Christina Branch, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a little emotional. I've had these animals since they were two weeks old. I've never had any encounters, any encounters of the sort for these animals. I've cared for them um, from, from birth up until now. Um, I've never known my animals to be aggressive. In fact, they, they've saved me. Um, I suffer with anxiety. And the animals seem to know. And I'm going through anxiety. And they seem to just come over. And their weight seems to help. I've been here every day to, to visit my animals every day, whether I'm coming from work or whether I'm coming from home. The property that I lived on prior to, um, where I'm at now, I'm actually um, going through a divorce, so I moved. And I took the dogs with me. Um, I just needed to find peace. And so in doing so, um, I thought the place that I was living in was, you know, pretty safe. Even by myself, it's just me and my, my animals. Actually, Lola was, Zeus stays with, was staying with my daughter, and I would have Lola because I only had one of the um, animals. However, I was on travel, and my daughter was at the house um, handling the dogs. She had had the dogs since Saturday. And every morning we would have a dialogue as I was on my way to training. Never had any issues. I, I take the dogs out. I have pictures of them in public, in the pet store, around people, my granddaughter. Um, never in encountered this when I never had to lock them up because they're not aggressive animals. Um, so. You know, that particular morning when she called me, you know, she was frantic. Of course, it scared me. And I, I had to gather myself to figure out what was going on. And um, I haven't had a chance to speak with her since, you know, the incident. I guess it actually put a wedge because I don't know what happened. She told me what happened. But um, at this point, they've, they've been here. I can't paint a, a picture for my animals as in, they're aggressive, they're mean animals, because they are not. And I've had them around all kinds of people, whether it's at the vet, I walk them with shot collars, I walk them with leash, they're never, they're never out without a leash. Um, at that particular day, um, she told me what happened. I walk my dogs, I've been on that property since the first of September, and I, I walk my dogs religiously between two or three times a day, and I've never had an issue. Um, if I see another animal on the property um, walking, I go another way, you know, just because I'm, I'm not familiar with the area or the in, uh, individual's animals. So I can't really tell you what happened, but I can only stand here and tell you that my animals are not what they've been displayed. Um, it's unfortunate what happened to Mr. Kim. Um, 
I just think that um, um, I believe that it was really merely a scuffle um, with the two animals. Um, my daughter has walked these dogs. She, she has Zeus. So she's walked these dogs, never had an issue. Usually when I, when I tell them to sit, they sit any command that I give them. So at this point, I'm at a loss for what, you know, really what happened. Well, on the day of the incident, uh, where were you? I was in New Orleans attending a, a week-long conference. Okay. And um, uh, how long have you had the dogs? I've had the dogs um, for four years, nine months, since they were two weeks old. Okay. And any incident like this before? I've never had any incident um, like this before. Ever acted aggressively toward anybody else? Never have acted aggressively. Okay. Um, you said that, uh, how long have you lived at uh, uh, the current residence where, where this happened? Since September 1st. All right. About two weeks before this? Yes, sir. So you would move there about two weeks before? Yes. Um, and why was it that uh, you would move to the new, new um, location? Because I'm actually going through a divorce, a separation, um, and just needed to move to get away from the current situation. All right. And um, so at the time of this incident, it was your daughter that was walking the yes. dog? Yes. Um, and you're understanding that the dogs were on a leash while she was walking them? In fact, I know that these dogs were on a leash. I've never even attempted to walk them without a leash, so I would never have anybody else walk them without a leash. Even a dog walker that I've had never have, walked, have never even attempted to walk these dogs without a leash. I had just only added the um, training collars because I figured it was just an added just for them. So that... Um, you, you've told the commission a little bit about the dogs. Um, you've taken some pictures that you brought with you? Yes. Um, may we? I think we've got copies for everybody. But there's, there's two different sets. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's one, and then yeah, the second. And, yes, that's exactly right. Can I ask a question? Yes. How old is your dog? She's 30. Yes, she's the one that was walking the two dogs. Yes, she's the daughter. Thank you. Had your daughter walked the dogs before? Yes, she has. On a regular basis, or? Yes, she has. Um, prior to me moving, she would come home. Um, in the neighborhood that I moved from, you know, it was um, a pretty big neighborhood, so sometimes she would come over and we would walk. Um, and then since I had been in this place, she had been there <coughs> regularly, which is why both of the dogs were there, because I was still moving in, um, trying to get settled before I traveled. So we would walk the dogs in the morning or in the afternoon if I was home. Um, we would walk. You indicated that you had just recently added shock collars to both dogs? Um, I had been having them, um, just, I had just been wearing them more, just putting them on more. What behavioral problems are you trying to correct? Um, there really wasn't many just behavior. It was just um, for the time that I've had them, for the most time we've been in a yard. So they've had a yard, a six feet foot yard, and they've had their own space. So they were never really around other people, other dogs, excuse me, other dogs. So me going into a new area, um, I had just put started training them because I knew that I would be moving. I had been looking um, to move for the last probably month or two prior to actually securing a new location. And so I just wanted to prepare because I had two dogs. I didn't know what I would, where I would be living. Um, everybody would be <coughs> new to the new location. You described the incident as a scuffle, but yet this gentleman's wounds and injuries were quite severe. And to what do you attest that? I mean, um, um, uh, my apologies if I, my apologies for actually making it seem as it wasn't as severe. Um, when I say a scuffle, um, the way that my daughter had um, shared it with me. Um, I know the way that she walks the animals, and I'll actually walk them, which is why she kept that same path. Um, neither of the dogs are like, when we come out, we're going to just attack the first thing or the first person we see. And so when she said that um, she was at the second hydrant, and um, she said, Mommy, I saw the dogs. I saw the dogs, and um, she said, I stopped. I was just, I, I stopped. 
and I told Colleen to go and get the, the callers. Um, she said that a defendant kept coming, I'm sorry, the plaintiff just kept coming towards her, and she said that um, Lola just was like, just looking. So um, I don't think it was a, a point of, it's like, again, a protection thing for her, or for Lola and Zeus, um, but I just think it was maybe like two dogs. I see you, you see me, I don't know you maybe just in the neighborhood. I don't know, I had never seen Mr. Kim. I had never seen him walking his animal. Um, when I, I had been walking the animals, when I would walk to people, they would see me, they would speak. Um, I've had conversation with people, but to ask me if I know anybody in the neighborhood, I don't. Okay, Mr. Kim. <clears throat> yes, sir. Did you get bit in the, in the process of trying to separate the dogs or did the dog go for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, one of the dogs attacked me bit my leg and I dropped to the ground and then one of the dogs went after my dog's hind leg and abdomen area and the other dog went after my dog's neck and bef and I was trying to shield my dog and the dog that was trying to go after my dog's neck tried to go after my neck. I kind of evaded it and it bit me in my chin and my in my face side of my you face right see, here. He's uh, still scored. Yes still still hurts a lot and and it ripped my uh, the skin off of my face and it freed the grip and then it started biting my dog's neck and I, um, I blocked it with my hand uh, while I hear that kind of another question um, I've seen two reports they say they they didn't have leashes. Is there, I mean, is there proof that they had leashes or not? I'm, I'm still kind of confused because I see contradiction here. Correct. When the officers were out on the scene, which is Officer Tachoni and Officer Simpson, when they responded, they're the ones that spoke to Mr. Murray. Uh, basic, which is the, um, Mr. Kim was already going to medical treatment, so he wasn't on the scene. Um, the statements that are in your packets in reference to what was taken out on the scene. Um, the the witness, which is the gentleman that came out to try to and help separate the dogs, which was Mr. Murray. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that basically advised. When I spoke to him on the phone um, later, he's the one that basically advised and stated that, that he didn't see any leashes on the dogs. When I finally talked to uh, Mr. Kim um, after the fact, you know, once he was released and came home. Um, again, because he couldn't give a statement because of his hand hurt so bad, um, he even advised me that the dogs were not on leashes at the time. May I, Your Honor? Uh, sure. Just, w Mr. Kim, when you, you first saw please, the Please address the oh, question. When, when he first saw the dogs, I mean, did, he, did he see them with Ms. Johnson on leashes? Time, I, I don't know, that's the same question I've got. If you're in a brand you new neighborhood with two dogs that are unfamiliar, I, I find it highly unusual to let them out for a walk yeah. without being on a leash. But, but, did, and did. Miss, just so that you understand, Miss, um, uh, she was not, not there at the time. Uh, okay, Miss Branch was not, not there. But, um, and I just, I don't know that if Mr. Murray's statement is, is in the packet, I didn't see it when I looked through briefly, although I do have some problems with that because I don't know that he actually witnessed what he heard. A commotion was told to come down and then so he come, sees what's going on when the dogs initially are grappling with each other. So well, we are led to believe at this point, Mr. Kim, that you saw the dogs not on leashes as um, well as Mr. Murray made that same comment? When they were coming at me, I did not see them on a leash. Um, and, uh, the right. dog that was attacking my dog's neck um, right. kind of got a hold of my hand and started. So just it wasn't until the shot collars were actually brought to the scene and put on the dogs before they were under control? Right, but the like her daughter was just kind of like pushing the shot collar. It, wasn't, it didn't do anything. But you didn't have a leash with them? I didn't see a leash. I, did, I don't think I saw a leash. It just They just came at me immediately and started attacking both of us. Yeah. He even stated in here, I mean, this is verbatim. I mean, I actually right. wrote it verbatim the way he stated it, and he actually signed and it was it was witnessed by Officer Simpson. Um, he said, we freed, the, we freed the dog 
I guess from his dog, and the owner put them in our garage. Dogs had shock collars on and not leashes. See, so that's, that's why I wanted to make sure because. And I mean, that was taken right at the scene when the officers were out there. Yeah. You know, they're starting to talk to everybody that's there. But again, I would just say, I don't know. Mr. Murray wasn't out there at the outset. He's not here to testify I'm here subject to cross-examination. So, and I understand the rules of evidence don't apply, but uh, it's not a statement that's notarized. It's not under oath. Um, and that's fine. I think we have a credible witness here with photographs. So, I mean, we've seen the damage done. So uh, I understand. And, and again, I'm, uh, I think I know my client, Ms. Branches, you know, doesn't yeah. want anybody hurt and uh, I understand this point the, the, the comment she just made was made the officers put those dogs in the garage without leashes the officers did that I'm isn't that I think officer Thomas is that what you just is it no actually it was mr. Murray oh mr. Murray put him in the garage okay um, that when I basically read um, I do believe that they did get the dogs he said it here that I ran outside grabbed a stick from the garage to put between the dog's mouth we freed the dog and the owner and, and and the end owner and put them in our garage. Okay, I apologize. Did we get a statement from the officers on the scene as to whether they saw leashes or not? They, I'm read, I read from their report what they saw and okay. stuff. I don't think that they actually pulled up with it actually going on. Okay. They're coming in the after okay. But they didn't mention whether the dogs were on a leash or not. Mm -mm. Okay. And, and I think to clarify, I think that what Mr. Murray was referring to is Mr. Kim and his dog right. is who okay. they put in. Um, the, with, the, with regard to the leashes, um, again, they're never walked. I've, I've never even attempted to walk them without leashes. The training cartels, perhaps, maybe, but they are never, ever walked <coughs> without a leash. I, they are my dogs, and I would never attempt to walk them um, without a leash. Now, in the um, photos that you guys may be looking yeah, at, can, they... Can you walk them through, the, uh, the starting on the... Uh, I, I have a question. I mean, I agree uh -huh. with you. That's probably your practice, but you, you weren't walking the dogs. Yeah, your right. daughters were. Your you're daughter absolutely was. right. So that's but, where I'm. And you're absolutely right. But the instructions that I that I, there's there's no need for me to leave an instruction as in don't forget to put the leash on the dog. That's never a question. Um, at, if that was the case, um, when the dogs came out and they originally saw another dog, it wouldn't have been a, a hesitant. If it was that, if they wanted to go after, her. Um, based on the information that I received, um, she had the dogs, and um, when Lola became agitated, Lola pu uh, pulled her and she <coughs> fell. So, if she had the dogs and she fell, and they dragged her, if they didn't have a leash on it, then they wouldn't have been able to drag her. So I don't. At no point, not in this neighborhood. In, in the four years that I've had these animals, they've never been without a leash. In the pictures, it would show that even in the in my vehicle, they're with a leash. At the vet, they're with a leash. They're always with a leash. Um, okay. My my dogs have never ever gone after anyone. All right, but, okay, that, that's fine. And that's technically a moot point because the dog's not being charged here at being at large. So okay, thank that's you. That's immaterial. Okay. The fact is, it's obviously okay. considered a dangerous dog because of the severity of the wounds yeah. to his dog okay. and to Mr. Kim. If just if you can, we, we've submitted some pictures uh, on the pictures that that you've taken. If you can just very quickly walk the commission through <coughs> what the pictures show, why you took them, uh, okay. why you think feel they're important. Okay. So um, on the first picture, um, it just particularly. It depicts that um, this was just a friend, and um, Lola and Zeus are very friendly animals, and so um, they were here just being calm. They had just met this person, or had been around this person, probably this is the first time they had been around this person. They were actually watching my animals, so um, they're pretty calm, not aggressive animals. Um, if you go to the um, second and third picture, you would note that they have a collar on as well as a harness. Um, and this, is, this was our routine. Um, some days we would just get in the car and go for ice cream and french fries. Um, another day on, on the third page was with Zeus um, laying underneath me. Lola and Zeus in the car again with their leashes on um, going for a ride. On the fourth picture, um, this was a day that um, I had been 
having a bad day. So when I seem to have a bad day, they seem to just, they know it, and they just come and put their weight on me. Zeus, um, same way on the second picture as well. The, um, on the picture with Lola and I, this was in the new place. Um, as what you see, the shot collar, and us just sitting on the steps. Lola's in the front seat with her collar on and her leash. Um, do you have a picture of a Christmas card? Yes. The picture, the Christmas card with the dogs? Um, the, the Christmas card picture is um, of them in a public place, um, well-mannered. Uh, had never met this young lady and could sit here and take pictures. They own harnesses and leash. At no point are they ever without a leash. The picture after that is my it's my granddaughter um, handling the the animals, and they've never been aggressive to her. I'm I'm always watching because they're such big dogs and she's a small girl, so um, they're never aggressive to her. Some, sometimes I have to tell her to leave them alone so they don't get you know really playful and stop you know being busy with her. And the other pictures are the same um, with Lola and Zeus behind me. Another day when they just came and laid their, their weight on me. And then you see some of the other pictures in the new house with their leash on and the collars. Right, you talked about the house. Uh, you got a second set of pictures. If you can just walk the commission through what's shown in, in those pictures so that they can see what the, uh, the setup is at your house. Uh, um, it, in this current house, it's a three-level town home. Um, when you walk in the home, the basement is on the same floor as the door. So when you walk back, when you look in the house, you're looking right through the basement. There is no, there is no door there. The two crates there are housed in the basement. Um, then um, there's a couple of other pictures kind of giving you a... a a scenery of what the basement kind of looks like. Is there a room for Lola and Zeus? Uh, is there a room? Do, do they have a room that they stay in? or they, You said uh, they're in the basement. They're in the basement. Um, okay. I attempted to move the cages upstairs when I first moved in there, but the cages are large cages, and so um, you can't put a bed in there um, with, the, with the crates. And so because they're uncrated when we're in the house, I don't crate them because it's just us. And I've never crated them. I never felt the need to crate them in the house because we're at home. Um, do you have crates? I do now? have crates, yes. All right. And the basement, is there any separate access in the basement? There's no way, any way of getting out of the house from the basement? Um, I'll just through the door, um, the door that we have. Um, when I would walk them, I would walk them out at the um, patio door, which is a sliding glass door. And I typically would walk them out in the back of the house. But um, uh, Zeus had... Uh, uh, had gotten a rash, so I kind of stopped walking him, walking them back there because it's a lot of wood. So that's pretty much where I had walked them. So I would just walk them around the back to the front of the home. Right. Um, all right. Any other um, photos in there that, that you want to talk about? Um, I have photos of the muzzles that I have purchased um, for them um, to walk, going forward to walk them, and also uh, harnesses as well, as well as the locks that have been placed on the crates. Um, and it shows what their leashes look like in front of the crate. Um, I don't know whether they, you have them, but uh, I also have for everybody a copy of uh, Lola's and uh, yeah. Zeus's vet records that show all their shots are all up to date. So this is a, uh, uh, a note from Miss Branch's therapist regarding the dog and in her therapy, and then there's also a statement from uh, uh, someone that knows Miss Branch with regard to uh, knowledge with uh, as to Miss Branch and the dog and uh, how important they are. And thank you. Uh, if you could just go ahead and, and uh, with regard to the uh, the treatment summary, just explain uh, who is um, Nicole Wright. Nicole Wright is um, my therapist that I have been seeing for the last um, year and a half and, um, from dealing with the 
um, having to separate or going through the uh, different life changes. So I have been seeing Ms. Wright um, as the days lead, led up to what had happened. I had been seeing her or having more sessions with her um, because I haven't had my animals and my animals have seemed to have brought me comfort. Um, um, she talks about, you know, we talked about how the separation and divorce has changed my life and has it altered my life, which is a cause for me why I had to move. Um, it's been a financial hardship having to move and pay out so much money. Um, with, uh, I usually am up in the morning as early as 3.30 heading out to the gym and I come back and I walk my dogs. We had a normal routine, and all of that had been distracted with me having to uh, move from my current location. Um, all right, and then you also have a, uh, uh, a note from Darren Miles. Who is Darren Miles? Darren Miles is my um, one of my coworkers that um, we work very closely together, and you know we often laugh about you know how important the dogs are to me, and you know when I travel. Recently in August, I had traveled and having a fear of boarding my animals because they had never been away from me. Um, I had boarded them in a facility after a lot of research. I had boarded them in a facility that had a, a webcam. And so every day, all day, you know, I was watching the cam because it was hard to be without the animals. You know, um, usually they could be at, at, at my home and someone would be there, but they were, in a sense, in a room all day long until they got out for walks or what have you. So I would just watch them. And you know, I would always say, God, I miss, you know, I miss Lola Zusa, how are they? Or I would make reference as in, I bet the staff there um, at the facility is about sick of me because I would call maybe two or three times a day to inquire about, you know, if their blanket was missing or, you know, if they were sleeping, were they sleeping? The room had a window, it had a door. And so um, they had never really been separated. So they had been separated, and so that was something that was a concern to me. The I dogs have been here, how often have you come up to see see the dogs while they've been uh, help, The dogs have been here? here since the 26th of September, and I've been here every day um, since they've been here. And so um, the officer, Thomas, and Officer Wolf has been gracious enough to escort me back, you know, on daily. Um, officer Thomas and I would have a daily dialogue and I'd say I'd like to come and visit Lola and Zeus. Um, certain days, I have certain times that I would come and see them, and if I couldn't get an escort, then I would just view them by the window. Um, so I would come every day to see them, uh, unless it was a Sunday or Monday and the facility was closed. Um, the property that you live in right now, it, is it a rental property? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, one of the reasons in the order uh, the current order has a requirement for fences, which um, my client doesn't have any ability to require or, or put a fence in there. Uh, even if the owner said it was okay, even a fence would still have to be okayed by the homeowners association. Um, what we're hoping for in terms of some modifications of the order, um, and I know that the, the bite was serious, uh, but sounds like it's something that happens while Mr. Kim is, is trying to separate the dogs, not to, to make that sound like it's okay, but uh, I think this is really a scuffle between the dogs that um, when he's trying down there with them and they're biting at each other, he gets bitten. It doesn't take a whole lot to, to you know, uh, cause a puncture wound, and, and I know that they photographs um, are what they are, but um, you can take photographs to make injuries look worse. You can take photographs to make them look less worse, and, and it just uh, a bite and a tug can cause a tear. Uh, I don't know that uh, uh, that that is an indication that th this is really uh, a situation where the animals are trying to harm someone. There, uh, there is a, a fight between the dogs. Not to say that that's okay, but we're we are asking for some modification on the order uh, with regard to the fence and some other things. The, the, uh, the other question I would ask is: This is a dangerous order, and seeing the hits, how you are a renter, have you consulted with your landlord to find out if he will allow a dangerous 
dog in that facility? I've, I've called her and spoken with her. Um, and basically she, she won't provide anything in writing one way or the other. She just said, I don't want to, I don't want to sign anything. Uh, I think that if, if she was required to sign in order to keep the dogs out, she would say, I'm just not signing anything. I think she, her feeling was, I don't want to be, uh, okay. The reason I ask is about 50% yeah. of the landlords we encounter will not allow a dangerous dog in the facility. So, yeah. you know, th this could hold, all be a moot point if that's the position that the landlord is going to take. The, the, the landlord isn't taking any any position. I did speak with her at length about, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? And her position was simply, the the dogs can come back. They cannot come back. She's just not taking. She, okay. She's not committing herself to anything. She doesn't. Her feeling is this is between Miss Branch and the commission, and uh, certainly she has uh, the ability under the lease if she has any concerns uh, through landlord tenant issues. But uh, I asked her if she would sign anything. She, again, she's just there, she's not signing anything one way or the other. Even if it was, if, as I said, if the commission said Do you want to sign something uh, to say the dogs can't come back. I think she'd say, no, I'm not Objection. signing anything. It's not, it's not her signing anything. When I spoke to her landlord on the phone, okay, um, she wanted more information in reference to the incident that occurred, okay, and why the dogs were deemed dangerous. Um, I gave that information. I did advise her she wasn't welcome to get a copy of the file if she wanted. She said no. Um, I, the only thing I explained to her was there wasn't anything in reference to be signing, okay. All I basically advised her is that the order advises her that she has given written and verbal consent of the dogs to be there. She was pretty adamant um, after I was speaking with her, you know, just trying to give her the information that she's asking for. Um, and I did advise her that, you know, if she basically stated that the dog cannot return there, that I would need something in writing. Um, she did explain to me that the house belongs to her father. Um, so the father is the owner of the property. Um, she basically said that they did not want to be liable. And I said, well, again, that is between you and Mrs. Branch, however, um, for her to have the dogs on the property with the conditions imposed, um, we have to have written and verbal consent from you. She basically said she was not given consent, and I explained to her, and I explained to Mrs. Branch, is that you guys are going to have to talk about this uh, because eventually I will have to have something in writing from her and verbal that she's going to allow the dogs to be there. Right, because the homeowner's insurance policy is going to may preclude that dog returning. I mean, just like any of the apartment complexes we have that have a list of dogs that are banned. I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's her It's her father's property if she basically says but no. If he has know. a mortgage on it and has homeowner's insurance on it, that homeowner's insurance company. Right, they're may, liable. They're, well, they may or may not be. They may have a closet say, these kind of dogs are banned. Somebody needs to check that out. I'm not sure. I understand. I'm just saying <laughs> these things come into play. Yeah, they don't. The, the, that's all, all things I, I would say that can get worked out between the tenant and the landlord if, if they have an issue. And, and I can't force uh, Miss, I think it's uh, Kirk Car. Carr. Uh, to sign anything, uh, and that's yeah, that's why I say, you know, if you, you you rephrased it the other way that says you need something in writing to prevent the dogs, we wouldn't we wouldn't have that either. I understand. Uh, but, I'm not trying to be yeah. tough here. What I'm saying is, if, before I'd start fighting to spend five thousand dollars on a fence, mm -hmm. I'd like to know right up front whether the insurance company that insures that property would not allow that dog to come back. Don't spend right. that kind of money if. You're not going to get the dog in the long run. The, That's all. I'm right. The, we, uh, uh, Ms. Branch does have have insurance that, that covers the dog regardless, and, and we'd be more than happy uh, to provide the indemnification agreement, yes. anything else to, to cover that, um, to, to take care of those things. But in terms of uh, our concern was, was the order as it currently exists, even if the landlord, you know, was willing to fill out something in writing, uh, requires a fence. And we can't force the landlord to put up a fence. And if, she, um, and even if, if she consented, the homeowners association still has to approve it. So there are conditions that are right now in the order that are beyond Mrs. Branch's ability, Mrs. Branch's ability to, to comply with at all. That uh, we're hoping can be modified um, uh, by you know by this process. So I would agree. I'm just saying that I would, I would. Can, can you I, tell us what you're asking for, yeah. please? Sure. Yeah. Um, go through them. Well, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's fair enough. What, um, 
we would ask that the, the um, designation, uh, number one, um, if this could actually be reduced in, uh, to a warning, uh, but at the, uh, ideally uh, just to a warning, uh, but at a minimum drop down to potentially dangerous as opposed to dangerous. Uh, again, I, this is the first time this has ever happened. There aren't any, there's no indication of any history uh, in this uh, of these dogs. So no, no real requirement that uh, the commission jumped all the way up to dangerous for, on a one-time incident. It uh, does seem, and again, it was a situation, well, well you had asked uh, what you want to change. Uh, the fence, if that requirement could be uh, taken out. Um, Number three. Yes, that was okay. item three. Um, item seven, uh, the uh, written consent of the, the landlord, uh, if that could be withdrawn, we can't force that. But if the landlord doesn't want the dogs there, she has the ability to, to uh, have the dogs not come back. But right now we're in sort of a cash 22. We have a lease where Miss Branch or Miss Branch has a lease so that she's living there. And she's got a situation where under this order she can't bring the dogs home, not because the landlord says she can't, but uh, because she can't produce something in writing. Um, item 10, as far as uh, with regard to the dangerous designation, sending out notices to all persons residing within 175 feet, and then the posting on the premises, number 11, uh, we would ask that if those can be withdrawn um, so that she can bring her dogs home. From the pictures you can see, I mean, this, this is a very close relationship that she has with her animals. They're very close to her, and <coughs> I think Dr. Chibalko had talked about wanting uh, the parties to be able to be successful, and, and I think that both for the dogs and, and Miss Branch, I think what would be successful is for them to be able to, to live together, again, in a, a uh, loving home uh, that I think the pictures show they, they, they do have when they're able to be together. And uh, there's never been an incident when Miss Branch has had the dogs, walked the dogs, uh, and you know it's a situation where the dogs are in a new home, a new place. They'd only been there for two weeks. They're being walked by her daughter, who has both of them. She gets tangled up, from what we're told, and the dogs um, were able to, to pull her and, and get over <coughs> to Mr. Kim's dog. And there was uh, the biting going on there, which resulted in Mr. Kim getting bit. But, um, uh, if those requirements could be taken out and the uh, designation reduced uh, to either a warning or, or to potentially dangerous so that uh, and the conditions removed so that these dogs who have been living here for, for a month can go home and be cared for by someone who obviously cares for them very, very much. Anything else? Um, um, I just want to um, extend an apology to Mr. Kim and his family. I don't know them. Um, again, I would never have my dogs do anything malicious um, to anyone. <coughs> I'm not here to convince you, rather. I wanted just to convey that these animals mean more to me than just a regular animal. They become a part of my life. And I think very carefully when I handle them, who they're around. I, I, I do whatever is necessary for these animals whether it's costly, whether it cost me. Um, this was an unfortunate case. Uh, I pray and I would do anything in my power to make it right. I can't take back what happened, but I definitely can going forward make sure that I would do anything to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, it's been a hard month to be without these animals, um, whether it's the commute, um, whether it's days that I don't get to see them up close. Um, it's very hard. Um, I just really want them home, and I just want to resume a, no a normal life. Um, despite nothing would change overnight, but I would do everything that I can, and have already started modifications to get them home. You still near live near her property, right? You yes, walk sir. your dog now. Yes. I mean, you're in custody now, but this is like the first time. Um, it is the first time. Well, this happened, but. This is a new neighborhood, it's a new community, and our sales rep has told me that, I'm not sure if it was Miss Branch or her daughter, but that he's been threatened by one of them, that she's, he's gonna 
get the dog stuck on him, and it, it should be on the report. And he it's in the cat notes, but we I couldn't confirm it and get a hold of it. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask about that. Yeah, it's in the cat notes, but there's there's no address for him, and we could not confirm who. There's a guy named Clifton with his phone number there. Yeah, he's our he sales rep. Get a, he can't get a hold of him. A sales rep it's for our community. He sells the houses. It's oh, it's a oh, new oh. development. So, okay. um, and um, I mean, just after this incident, I, I just um, just afraid to walk my dog. My mom hasn't been able to walk my dog ever since. Um, she's afraid. She says that if it was, because she walks my dog too, and she says if it was her and, and my dog, they'd be dead. And um, I, I don't think I'm a weak person, and I, I couldn't get them off of me. Um, there was four people, four people, and my mom, five people included, you know, that were trying to break the dogs up, and I feel like we kind of got lucky. Um, just you, how I, you know. You've, you've heard the modifications they want. Is there any, are you, are you against any of the modifications? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm against everything. I'm, I'm very, I'm very scared. I'm, you know, just traumatized by this, what happened, and um, it's, it's just kind of changed our lives a little bit. Um, I can't, I can't wear headphones on my right ear. I can't sleep on the right side of my, you know, right side of my face, and I have right, pain you. shooting from my hand to my elbow, just all the time. I, it's kind of, you know, changed our lives for the worse. Just so I'm clear, you yes, stated that one of the dogs bit you on your leg, correct? Yeah. And that's what caused you to fall to your knee? Yeah. And then while trying to prevent or break the dog up from your dog, one lunged towards your throat? My, yeah, my neck. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you moved and that's how you yeah, if got you the see, puncture wounds that you had? Yeah, okay. I have a, my skin got torn off my chin mm -hmm. and my side of my face right here. Okay. He, he was able to grab, the dog was able to grab me and then and Ms. Branch, uh, you mentioned that you walk your dogs on leash. Uh, is it possible that while your daughter had custody of the dogs that she might have got complacent and not walked them on a leash? No. Okay. No. Uh, has your daughter dog sat for you before? Yeah, um, yes, she has. Okay. Uh -huh. You've also made mention that your dogs listen very well? If she gave the command of maybe stop or sit or something like that, is that a command that they might have followed from her? Yes, I okay. do believe that. And do your dogs normally take commands from folks other than yourself? Um, yes, because they know um, in the home that I moved from, um, we all had a different way of how we kind of spoke to the dogs, where someone may say sit, I may say relax. Mm -hmm. So they knew the difference of sit, relax, lay down, be still. Um, in the community that I live in now, um, it's a, when I say close-knit com community, the houses are attached versus where I moved from. So in the community um, where it's ever-growing, um, there are quite a few um, animals there. And um, one of my neighbors that I had the pleasure of meeting, he actually has two animals that I've spoken to with my dog. Um, and I've seen them out. And so I don't avoid them because I don't trust my dogs. I just avoid them because it's just easier. So um, I'm never at a point to where I think my dogs wouldn't or that they would. I, I've always taken precaution um, for my animals. Even me being out um, handling two animals as small as I am, I've never had an issue with getting them in the car, um, taking them into PetSmart, a public place, you know, but I've never had an issue of this. So um, this was the first time that we've ever experienced anything. So, so. it's a bit traumatizing um, for me as well. Um, it puts me definitely on, a, on an alert, as in, you know, when I walk my dogs again, you know, thinking what would I do differently, which I already know what I would do differently. So I hear, I hear you on that, but this isn't the last trip that you're gonna take. You're gonna travel again. And what happens when the dogs are in the care and custody of whomever you decide to entrust with your dogs and something like this happens again? Well, um, my dogs have been boarded. So um, this particular, um, how my daughter ended up watching the animals was 
the young lady that was supposed to watch them, um, she had an emergency and she canceled. And so um, I didn't have enough time to secure the boarding facility um, that I've used before. And um, that's how she ended up. But I have a um, boarding facility that actually is housed where they have an emergency room, a day and spa, which they've been there. So like a doggy daycare? Yes, sir. Okay. So, but they've been there and they, if something happens to them, then they're in, a, in an emergency room or whatever. So um, I would never have anyone else uh, care for my dogs other than a boarding facility. And you don't have to answer this question, but you said you're renting. Um, do you plan to rent long term? Or I know you're going through a situation and um, everything, so do you feel like you might live there for a very long time? Um, I have committed. Um, when I signed the lease, I committed for two years. Um, so I'm locked in the lease for the two years. Anything else? Just real quick. Um, have you had your dogs around other dogs? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, when you said you have greeted your neighbor with your dogs and haven't had any issues, but you said it's easier to just stay away, is that because of something you observed or something you feel or what, what has you feeling uh, that way? Um, well, because, I'm, because I may be a dog lover. You may not like dogs, so I don't think that it's appropriate that if I bring my dogs around you, you may feel uneasy or you may not... You may be well, I'm not talking about somebody that doesn't like dogs. I'm talking about the neighbor that you said that you that has. But I didn't you know, know her. That was my okay. first time um, meeting him, as well as another young lady. This was my first time, so um, we were in pro um, close proximity, and they sat, you know, what have you. But just because I don't know them and my dogs don't know them, it's almost like a stranger. So I just a precaution. I'm not going to have my dogs jumping up, or even potentially jumping up. So I just was avoiding it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions before we close for deliberations? Okay, we are closed for deliberations. So the only thing I was going to add, Larry, was um, understanding the circumstances and basically listening to all the testimony today and stuff. And I'm not saying that Mrs. Branch is a bad owner. And understanding that this happened under her, not under her control. Um, Animal Troll stayed firm with this case because effectively we had two dogs, and both of those dogs inflicted injury. Understanding that he got a severe injury, but so did his dog, which it was not me mentioned here a lot. So that is our concern, and obviously, you know, before, and I know we repeat ourselves all the time, you know, we always want these dogs to succeed, you know, and I pretty much had multiple conversations with Mrs. Branches that we wanted them to succeed, and I know she's in a tight spot here, the fact that she has a landlord. You know, this agency is obligated to uphold public safety to its fullest, um, and, and the concern could be that the fact that the <coughs> landlord um, may be an issue here, you know, and I did explain to Mrs. Branch that you know, obviously I'm going to have to, have to be talking to our landlord again um, because we don't want there to be liabilities on either half because there's liabilities on her as well. You know, and understand she does have an insurance policy. I did talk to her about that. Um, but, you know, Animal Troll, basically, we issued this order for a reason, and that was to place stipulations to prevent this from happening again. Mm -hmm. um, animal Care and Control is going to stay firm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we are now closed for deliberations. Start at that end. Comments? Man, I'm torn uh, because it sounds like the dogs are probably more at ease when they're with who they're supposed to be with. And maybe because of that, she's able to maintain the control that needs to be had over them as opposed to someone other than herself, um, which is probably part of the reason why this happened. Um, I wish the report read a little clearer as to whether or not there were leashes observed on the dogs upon arrival. Um, once the officer proceeded to Mr. Murray's house to gain custody of the dogs with animal control. Um, but it's not like, uh, I mean, it, it's, it sucks that, you know, it doesn't sound like Mr. Kim was bit as a result of trying to break it up. It sounds like he was intentionally bit on his leg. And on his face. And on his face right. as a result of being bit on the leg. But we're talking about the gate and the kennel.
agree with you in that um, I feel like the leash is a moot point for me. I, yeah, I right. don't even need details about it. Um, if someone's statement was wrong, not even not even a concern for me. It, because we're not talking about them running at large. Let's, I mean, bottom line is they're out on a walk. Yeah. I'm just gonna assume there was leashes involved. Um, they're on a walk. I can't imagine, but that they would be without leashes, but maybe they were, it's a moot point to me. So I would say moving for that to your point, the initial bite to the leg um, makes you think that, you know, it wasn't just a bite from like getting their hands in the mix, that that happens. We see that, hear that all the time. Um, it, although part of it does sound like he just got into the mix of it, trying to break them up. Um, it, you know, it's, but we're not t delineating between, you know, dog on dog or dog on human. Like, we're not really delineating that. It's a, it's a dangerous situation for, you know, both humans and dogs. So, um, <clears throat> it's just, um, you know, the concern about like downgrading it from dangerous to potentially dangerous, it's possible. However, the severity of the wounds of it make, is concerning for me. That's my only concern about downgrading it from dangerous to potentially dangerous. We always take into consideration the, the life of the owner and the life of the pet I'm trying to get home. Um, in a renter situation, it's really, really hard. I don't know if downgrading it from dangerous order to potentially dangerous order would make living there any easier for her. She is, an inco she is in compliance um, with a lot of the things already. I think the incident happened when they were walking outside, so the requirements that are in this order, dangerous or potentially dangerous, to be walked on double leash harness with a muzzle would have prevented this situation. So I'm definitely willing to be lenient on things, especially in a renter situation with fencing. If they're walk they didn't like escape a yard, they didn't escape the front door, they were on a walk, so the leash and the muzzle on walking seems to be the most pertinent information right now for us. Um, and then of course the insurance and everything else, but I would say, I, so I don't know about coming down from dangerous to potentially dangerous based on the bite severity. I feel like that is a sticking point for me. I would agree with you. Um, and no matter how it happened, just getting in the mix of it, it was significant enough. Um, uh, and it wasn't just the hands. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are about that. I, I would concur. I think the only latitude we have is the fencing because it is beyond your control. That's up to the... Just trying to make it so you know, dogs can go home. Yes, you know. but uh, it, at some point the owner's property is going to have to confirm whether that, daughter can, that dog can return or not, regardless of whether they want to sign it or not. They have to make a decision. That's a requirement. Some of these and we have leniency on, and some of them we don't. We can't right. budge. Number seven, we don't. We can't budge because animal control will not release that dog without some confirmation from the landlord that that dog would be allowed back on the premise. So that's beyond our control. I agree, due to the severity of the wounds, that this needs to remain a dangerous order. Thus, points ten and eleven need to stay in there as well. So the only thing I'm willing to bend on is number three, the fence. I don't make a motion. Yeah, I uh, to keep the dangerous order, but just want to find the fence. Okay. Do we have a second? Strike three. I, I would second that. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Second.